Math 31, we're back at it. So let's take a look at example seven. I want you to take note that this function is pretty similar to the function we graphed in example three, but there's this negative symbol out in front of this. So if you remember way back from section 3.5, when you have a negative symbol outside of your function, outside of the grouping symbols, this is going to reflect your graph over the uh, x-axis. And what happens is any y value, any function value that was positive in example three becomes negative. And any function value that was negative in example three becomes positive. So we're switching from positive y values to negatives or negatives to positives. And that reflects you over the x-axis. All right, so with that, let me scale up, label and scale my axes. And we're gonna get going. All right, so like always, let me put a little separator. Let's talk about the domain. My domain is just this argument, or is just x. My argument is just x, I should say. And I need that argument to be greater than zero, so we're looking at zero to infinity. And it, like always, whatever value of x zeroes out your domain, that becomes the x-coordinate for your vertical asymptote. So let's go draw in our vertical asymptote at x equaling zero. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick some key points. I've got a base of two, so I'm gonna use powers of two to help me out with this. So for key points, like always, I'm gonna to stick to the ones I've been using. I'm gonna go one, two, four, and eight. So let's see what we get when we start plugging these in. All right, so when I plug one in, log base two of one is zero. Zero times negative one is zero. Just take note, there's my x-intercept, right? Again, where your argument was one. We're always interested in when your argument is zero for vertical asymptotes and where your argument is one for x-intercepts. All right, let's try x equaling two. Log base two of two is one. One times negative one is negative one. All right, for four, log base two of four is two. Two times negative one is negative two. For eight, log base two of eight is three. Three times negative one is negative three. Let me go graph these. So I had one, zero, two, negative one, four, negative two, and then eight, one, two, negative three. So I can see my graph coming in, and if you're struggling with this just a bit, let's go back to the graph we found in example three. And I want you to think about what this would look like if we reflected this graph over the x-axis. So I want you to think anything that was positive, right? These are the positive y values. They become negative y values. And anything that had negative y values like down here become positive y values. So this flip-flops or reflects over that x-axis. So, with that being said, I can see my graph popping in there. Okay. My range is still down forever to up forever, so I'm going negative infinity to infinity. And just to finish all those other traits out, let's see what we got. Our x-intercept, our y-intercept, our end behavior, and holes. All right, so for our x-intercept, I found it. My argument was one at one. I had no y-intercept, oops. Should we write none or D and E? I had no y-intercept because zero is not in my domain. I'm not allowed to plug zero into this function. For my end behavior, nothing on the left, down arrow on the right. and I had no holes. And again, the reason I have no holes is if you look at this argument, there's no fractions in there. And if there's no fractions, I'm not gonna have a hole. You have a hole when there's a fraction in your argument or in your function, and you have a factor common to the numerator and denominator. All right, we're gonna keep on going with reflections, so I will catch you in a few, bye.